I am going to teach you how to convert fractions to decimals and kind of give you a rundown on the things that you can run into when you're converting a fraction into a decimal and kind of explain the importance of that. So in my class, a lot of the students will be wondering why do we convert a fraction to a decimal? Then the next thing they'll ask is what did I get on this test? What, did, what is my percent? So I tell them if you do a fraction and you convert it over to a decimal, you will be able to get uh, your percentage. So it's just a nice little way of showing percentages. So uh, the first thing that you can run into is uh, 6 out of 10. So 6 out of 10 is basically saying that you have 6 parts out of 10. So to make this 6 tenths out uh, into a decimal, it's actually giving us an easy thing to use so far. So in order to make something easier, a fraction easier to represent as a decimal, you want to make it either out of 10, 100, 1,000, but right now we actually have a 10 at the bottom. So it's actually really, really simple. We take the 6 that's at the top, and we'll move it right here. Now, the 10 is represented as a whole. This is saying that we have 6 out of a possible whole, so we actually don't have a whole. So our, where our holes would be would be in the one spot. So if we don't actually have any holes in this spot, we represent that as a zero. So when people are dealing with money primarily, uh, they would say, I have three dollars and fifty cents. The and is actually a decimal. So this would be zero and six tenths. Six tenths. That's exactly how you'd represent it. So the next problem that you could run into is you have a fraction that's not out of 10, 100, or 1,000. But there's stuff that we can do. We can change this number into a 10. And the way that we do that is we multiply this to make it into a 10. But what we do to the bottom, we have to do, we have to, do to the top. So I'll multiply this bottom number by 2 and the top number by 2, which will give me 4 tenths. Now if you look back at this first example right over here, you see that it's almost the exact same except the top number has changed. So what we do in this case, we have four tenths, so the four will go right over here. We don't have a whole number because this is a fraction, so we'll have zero holes and four tenths. So it's as simple as that. Now, you could run into a very, very big problem where you do not know. Can you make that into a 10? Can you get the 4 into a 10? No, it's actually quite hard. This 3 quarters, you will actually have to probably move it into the hundreds. So to do that, you have to multiply it by a large number. We know that four quarters makes up a dollar. So if we have four of these quarters, we'll know that that will make a whole. So if I multiply this bottom number by 25 and this top number by 25, like I said before, four quarters makes one dollar. Twenty-five cents equals one, or four quarters is equal to four twenty-five cents which is equal to 100 cents. So I'm just going to change these into 75 over 100. Now this is actually really, really easy to represent as a decimal. Because you take the 7 and the 5, the 7 is in the 10 spot, the 5 is actually in the 100 spot. So the 7 goes there, the 5 goes there, I don't actually have a whole as is represented by this fraction, so I'll have zero ones and 75 one hundredths. So if we have three and three eighths, for example, that's a mixed number. We're going to actually keep the three by itself, and we're going to try and figure out what this three eighths is as a decimal. So to do that, you'll take your denominator and you'll put it on the outside of the division symbol, and you'll put the 3 on the inside. 
So we know eight goes into three how many times? Well, it doesn't go into how uh, it doesn't go into three at all. So we have to put a decimal there. I mean, we have to put a zero there. Now, if we put a decimal here, that means that we can put as many zeros at the end of this in order to make eight fit into that. So we'll just do one for now. So eight goes into thirty. It doesn't actually go into thirty an equal amount of times. So we have to get some something close, but not over that. So if I times 8 by 3, I'll get 24. So I'll do 8 times 3. It'll give me 24. That I'll, number I'll plop at the bottom here. And I'll put that 3 that's right up here, right there. Now I'll subtract these two numbers together, which will give me 6. I can't put 8 into 6. I'll grab another one, put it down there. 8 goes into 60. 8 goes into... 67 times with the remainder of 4. 8 times 7 equals 56. You'll pop the 56 down here. And you'll put the 7 up here. 60 take away 56 is equal to 4. We'll add another 0 because we can. Drop it down there. And 8 does go into 40 an equal amount of times. 5 times. So now, we have our 3 eighths as a decimal. Now, we keep this number here the exact same. We'll just put it here, because that's three holes. We have three holes, and we have 3 eighths left over. But we have to convert that into a decimal. But we already did that over here when we were doing long division. So we'll just plop these three numbers after the decimal. 3, 7, 5. So 3 and 3 eighths converted to a decimal is equal to 3.375. Thank you very much for your time and have a wonderful day.